Hey guys, in this video, I want to share with you one of my favorite dinking technique tips. It's super simple, really easy to implement, and it will fix a lot of common flaws that I typically see. Stick around and I will tell you all about it. Okay, so what you're watching here is Zane and I doing a little bit of dinking, basically while we're warming up for a drilling session that we're about to do. What you don't see though is what's going through my head and what I'm kind of focused on while I'm doing this dinking session. If you've watched any of my videos before, you probably know that kind of one of my pillars of coaching is the idea that less is more. So even in my own game, I'm always looking for how can I accomplish a shot or a movement with less complexity and more efficiency. There's basically three phases to any swing. What happens before contact, commonly known as the backswing, what happens right at contact, and what happens after contact, commonly known as the follow through. If you've seen my butterfly net video, that's a great example of how we can be more efficient before contact or in our backswing. If you haven't seen that, I'm gonna link it here. So I would definitely go check that out. So before we dive in deep here, I wanna thank Selkirk for being a supportive sponsor of my channel. If you have any pickleball paddle or apparel needs, definitely check them out. They make awesome stuff and use my link and code that's in the description below. In this video, we're going to focus on what's going on in the follow through of your dink. So I'm sure you've heard before in videos or from coaches that following through is important and it certainly is, but the length of the follow through can vary greatly. A follow through is just basically the speed in your paddle slowing down until it comes to a stop. If you're driving the ball or trying to hit the ball hard, you're going to have a lot of acceleration through contact and a long follow through. If you're dinking though, you're only getting the ball to go maybe eight to 10 feet. You don't need that much speed in your paddle to get the ball to travel that distance. Therefore, a long follow through should not really happen. It's usually an indicator that there's some inefficiency in the swing. Okay, so let's get to the tip now. Next time you're dinking, next time you're practicing your dinks, warming up your dinks, I want you to think of something that I call the dink ceiling. And basically what it is, is we're gonna pretend like there's an invisible plane that goes along the top of the net so that it extends across the top of the net cord. And we're not gonna let our paddle break that invisible plane when we're dinking. Really the goal of this is to start to train ourselves and get a feel for how little of a movement it actually takes to get a dink up and over the net. By having a smaller movement, it's going to mean more overall control, less that can go wrong in the dink, and a quicker recovery back to your ready position again. So here's a quick clip of not only four of the best players in the world, but probably four of the most consistent dinkers. And while we're watching this, we're gonna note a few things. First, we're gonna try to, in our minds, create that imaginary ceiling that's kind of sitting on top of the net. As you're watching these guys hit, pay attention to how often their paddle is going above that imaginary ceiling. It's really not very much at all. I'd say that between the four of them, probably 95% of this rally, their paddles are at or below net height. If you look at their ready positions, their ready positions, all four of them are sitting right around maybe net cord height. When they go down for a dink, obviously they're dropping below that point. And then when they finish, they're coming right up to about that same height again. Rarely do you see the paddle in any of these dink rallies end up at say chest to shoulder height. All right, it's your turn now. I want you guys to get out and hit your practice court, create that imaginary ceiling in your mind and keep those swings simple and below that ceiling. 
If you liked the video, I would really appreciate you supporting the channel by subscribing. Also, leave your comments below about what video you wanna see coming up next.